the biggest lie an adult has ever told you and when you figured out it was a lie. When I was a kid, my dad in fact told me that it was illegal to turn the lights on inside the car while it was in motion. Come here, I now understand that he said that because he just didn't want me to turn the lights on in the car, but nobody updated me on that information. So for the longest time, I always thought it was illegal to turn the lights on in the car while the car was moving, and it was an immediate 20 year sentence in jail. So as a grown man with my own car, I never, turned on the lights in the car until one day I literally had to, it was too dark, but coincidentally, I got pulled over. When the cop came to the side of the window, I'm in tears and he goes, do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, it's because I had my lights on in the car while it was in motion. And he goes, no, your, your tail lights, are, are you okay? And I'm like, no. So instead of giving me a ticket, he recommended me to a good therapist. It was a lot going on. It's not illegal, by the way. It is not to catch you stealing. So allegedly, the Walmart CEO, right, made a statement about a day ago saying that he is willing to shut down all the Walmarts around the world if they keep losing money in theft. Apparently, they're losing too much money in theft. They lost about $3 billion this year in theft. Come here. Guess how much Walmart makes in profit every year? $152 billion in profit. And that's actually on the website. So clearly that's not going to happen. They're not closing anything. And the thing is, right, if you really are worried about theft so much, right, and, and you're willing to go to the lengths of creating devices that show exactly how things are being scanned at the self-checkout, why not just actually have real cashiers again, right? Or make Walmart 24 hours. Or add Apple Pay. You know, just, just do, do certain things that might prevent this. Because if not, people are just going to get smarter, it, nothing's really, you know what I mean? Like, you want, this device stops you from using your mobile phone. You can lock it in this case for up to 99 hours. Fun fact, these are unbreakable. I didn't know that, right? My friend bought this yesterday. You can put your phone in it, and then you put a code on it, you close it, and you put a time limit. And it literally traps your phone inside that case for however long you set the timer for, and you cannot open it. It's like impossible. I jokingly put it for five hours yesterday and closed it, because I'm like, oh, that's a cute little device. It's not cute, it's serious, because my phone was locked in it for five hours. I, I'm like, I just want my phone back, and my friend's like, well, you're gonna have to wait five hours. And I was like, well, can I at least bring the device back to my house? He's like, no. So I had to leave the phone at my friend's house for five hours. It, it works. I'm, what I'm saying is it works very well. Is you just pull that, put them on your nose. Oh. It's the fact that I ran outside of my room. I saw this and I told myself, oh my goodness, there are glasses that exist. First off, that you can just pinch on. That's awesome. And second, that can make you look like Dr. Otto Octavius from Spider-Man. I have no idea where to find them. I just started running outside, seeing the, the nearest store, asking the store owner, where can I get my Dr. Otto Octavius sunglasses? They told me to leave, but that... One of the best creations I've seen in my life, I'm not gonna lie to you. Your phone background and incoming text message. So it always looks like somebody just texted. You wanna know what's funny, right? They conducted a study years ago where they tested 100 people who claimed to be extroverted, right? Outgoing, who loves to be social. Then they also tested 100 people who are introverted, people who like to keep to themselves, who don't like being social at all, right? And what they found in the case study is that the majority introverted people are just smarter than extroverted people, right? Mind you, this is a smaller study, but it was still interesting because they say they claim introverted people are just more clever. And this is a tactic that introverted people use to get out of social situations. They'll make their wallpapers incoming text messages to be like, hey, I'm getting a text, I gotta go. My friend who's extremely introverted, what he does is he screenshots an incoming call and makes it his wallpaper and sets a six minute alarm and the alarm tone is his ringtone. So it makes it sound like he's getting a call so he can get out of any conversation he might not wanna be in. He, it's brilliant. Krispy Kreme here in Guadalajara, Mexico, and look at all the bees. Now, fun fact, right? Come here. Back when I worked at Krispy Kreme, they actually had protocol for situations like this, right? Believe it or not. I'm sorry. But they called it a code yellow. You can only imagine why. And that is because bees are attracted to things like nectar or pollen or uh, propolis, which is a mixture that honeybees would make, right? To put it in like layman's terms, bees love sweet. So when there were openings inside of Krispy Kreme stores, sometimes overnight bees would form hives. 
literally in the cases. Now, depending on the severity of how many bees are in the case, we can normally just like close off the actual like area itself and still sell donuts for a little bit, depending on how bad it can get. Also, fun fact, bees don't like donut holes. So, you know, the, the donut holes are at least uh, good to go. So. <laughs> we'll give it the knock test, right? Ooh. I don't think you guys understand, right? The knock test for bread is a real thing and is predominantly amongst New Yorkers, right? I made bread one time. I made bread one time. It was for a work party, right? I make the bread. I bring it to the party. I just made it, right? And as I'm putting it down on the table, this coworker I had from New York picked the bread up, knocked on the bread, and he just put it back down. And I'm like, are you going to try the bread? Come here. He said, I wouldn't even waste my butter on that bread right there. I never ever wanted to make bread ever again. So please understand, New Yorkers know what they're talking about when it comes to bread. Shit. I don't think you guys understand, right? People who love shoes or sneakers, they love shoes. Like they'll value that over people, right? So if you get them dirty or if you crease them, they're basically like useless to people who love shoes like that. I had a friend in college Right. The school gave him a financial aid disbursement. That's money that you get for food and educational purposes. Right. They gave him two thousand dollars. He had to make that stretch for three months. Right. He wanted this expensive pair of shoes. He bought the five hundred dollar pair of shoes and put those little protectors on the bottom. We walked along a dirt path and he showed me the protectors because he ripped them off, not knowing we had to walk back. So we got those that first pair dirty. So he went to the store and bought the same pair that day for another $500. He creased that pair, then bought a third pair and spent $1,500 in the same three pairs of shoes because he said school's temporary, but shoes are forever. It's illegal for your boss to tell you that you're not allowed to discuss your pay with your coworkers, including bonuses. See, and fun fact about talking about pay with coworkers is this. Um, I wasn't allowed to talk about my pay with my coworkers. That's what my boss told me. Until one day, my coworker was talking about, oh, we need to get paid more. And I was like, I agree. Getting paid $12 an hour is not enough. And he said, Jordan, I'm getting paid $15 an hour. And I was like, did you get a bonus? Come here. He said, Jordan, that's, that's the legal minimum wage. Did you not know that? And I was like, that, you guys getting paid $15 an hour? So yeah, definitely ask about that. Black shirts, you're going to want to do a dry rot test. So put your fingers and pull. If it rips, easy. Hey, there's other ways, you know, to test to see if a shirt is good or not. Um, my friend would do the dry rot testing where he would just rip the shirts um, in the store. That's fun. Uh, we were having a conversation while we were thrifting. I'm actually, I'm talking to him. Mid-conversation, he just rips the shirt. I'm like, hey, buddy. Why are we doing that? Um, he's explaining to me that there was, it was a dry rot test and this is how you see if the shirts are a good quality or not, things of that nature. Well, the thrift store itself didn't find that too uh, appealing because they, he char they charged him for every shirt that he ripped. He ripped eight of them. Um, he didn't have money, so I had to pay for the shirts. So come here, just ask the people if the shirts are good. You don't have to rip them. I don't know how he got in the house. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> come here. We had to ask the real questions here. Like how, how did the cicada get into the hair clip? Do, do you know how, how fast cicadas can move inside of small spaces? You have to be a martial arts master to get the cicada inside of hair clip jail like that. And people are asking, do cicadas bite? Technically, yes, right? Cicadas mistake humans for trees, so they'll try to pierce the skin. Now, it doesn't irritate, but it is scary. So if you guys don't want cicadas around your house, what you can do is you can make a cicada repellent spray. Cicadas do not like the smell of vinegar, peppermint, eucalyptus, or citronella. So if you want, add those oils into a spray bottle with water or dish soap, spray them on your trees so that cicadas won't be attracted to the trees. Either that or just give the cicada your home, your choice. I don't really know how millennials don't seem to be aging quite like the generations before. Millennials age differently from the older generation and this newest generation. Does that make sense?
the older generation, they look exactly like their age, right? A 50 year old looks like a 50 year old. A 20 year old looks like a 20 year old, right? Millennials, they either look way too old for their age or they look way too young and there's no in between. Does that make sense? And the newest generation come here, they all just look like adults at this point. Every single person in the newest generation already look like they have a house and they're paying a mortgage. And that's because of stress, right? The older generation, they stressed a good amount. This millennial generation, we have too many things to stress about. And this newer generation, they kind of just gave up. They, they already gave up before it even started. People kept asking me, saying, Jordan, what would you do if you were to find a colony of these specific insects? Come here. I would probably move cities due to the fact that this specific insect has more than seven different nicknames for the amount of danger that surrounds them. I can only tell you one of them. They are called the John Wick of Hornets. And I'll tell you why. Because of their photographic memory, they can survive underwater, and they live up to half of a year. And the angrier they are, the longer they survive. On top of that, they report back to the colonies about what they saw. So not only do 20 of them know what I look like, probably 40 of them aren't too fond of me. Therefore, because of that, I would move cities and probably legally change my name just to be safe. Milkshakes for the whole year 2023. At this point, I'm just not going to go to fast food places anymore because I got the keychain. I got it. The $2 keychain that if you buy it, you get free Frosties for the whole year. It says right here on the back, right? So I'm like, you know what? I'll go to Wendy's and use the Frosty thing, right? Turns out Wendy's is just like McDonald's because they're like, yeah, our Frosty machine's broken. I'm like, I literally, I literally just saw you use it. They're like, well, we're about to close, so we can't really help you. I'm like, can you please... Just give me a Frosty. Then they said, we don't have Frosty cups. I'm like, I have my own cup. If I bring my own cup, will you put Frosty in it? They're like, yeah, sure. I brought this cup. Do you see that line right there? That's how much Frosty they put in the cup. I am i can't do Wendy's anymore. I can't. Me a Vance build a bridge to invade Wasp's Nest. Oh, that's fun. That's great. You guys want to know a couple facts? It's a real f fun facts. With Jordan, I'm going to tell you this right now. Did you know that ants are one of the most dangerous predators in the world? That's fun. Here's another one, right? Ants have fatally harmed more people statistically than sharks have ever had. So in theory, ants are more dangerous than sharks. Not only that, ants are incredibly smart. They can swim. They don't have ears. They have two stomachs. And this is the best part about all this, right? They can see in the dark. You didn't know that. Here's one fun little story. I had a bowl of fruit. I had it next to my bed. I woke up to witness one piece of my mango being carried away by an army of ants. And I tell people to this day and they don't believe me. And I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't blame you, but it happened. I watched them steal my mango. Yeah. Let this be a warning to you guys. If you have a job interview and they hire you almost on the spot, don't work there. There's a reason everybody had left. I had one job interview. We sat down with each other. He said, first things first, do you have a car? I said, yes. He's like, fantastic. And he's writing that down on paper. I'm like, why are you? That has nothing to do with the job. The job didn't even involve a car, right? By the time the interview was done, he said, well, we're going to look this over and we'll give you a call back in a while. I thought it was going to be a couple of days. I left the building. I was walking to my car. I get a phone call. It's the guy from inside the store. And he's like, yeah, you got the job. I did not take that job. I don't know if you know this already, but there's at least one male friend that you have that has suppressed his feelings for you. They already know. Come here. Every single girl who has a guy friend, they will know if that guy friend has feelings for them very quickly. The only thing is, even though the girl knows, they'll pretend like that guy friend doesn't in hopes that that guy friend finds somebody else so that they can at least keep the friendship how it is. But I promise you, girls already know. It's just as simple as like, the sun is hot and grass is green. They already know. It's a cup that tightens up to stop any liquid from escaping with the quick twist of a hand. And it's also perfect. 
Well, I know it's funny. One of our coworkers has this kind of cup, right? And this cup is literally perfect for hiding things because what happened was one of our coworkers was stealing from our tip jar every other night. And we didn't know where this tip money was going. We're like, there's no way we work a whole entire day and we only have like a couple dollars in tips. But what they were doing was they were putting it in that cup and then tightening the lid on it. And we're just like, I don't know whose cup this is, but we didn't know what it was. Right until one day and it fell over and we heard all the money jingling around in it. It took me a while to figure out how do I even open this cup, but it was quite honestly elaborate. The only thing that they messed up on was keeping this weird cup in the restaurant for so long. But yeah, this is quite innovative technology. Wendy's and asked for the biggest burger they had on the menu. So for those of you guys who don't know, that is a T-Rex burger. This is an urban legend in every Wendy's. This is a nine patty burger that they discontinued about eight years ago. If you go to the right Wendy's, they'll make it for you, right? I had to travel three hours to this Wendy's because they agreed to make it for me. When I purchased the burger, they said, and I quote, when they gave it to me, they said, be careful with this. I'm now going to show you what this burger looks like. This is the burger. This is the burger. I'm going to open this burger. This is nine patties, and for some reason, it smells like maple syrup. Update, I took three bites, and I think my body is rejecting the burger. There is a reason they discontinued this burger. I'm questioning all of my life decisions. I, I can't. Here's the deal about Five Guys, right? Come here, I used to work at Five Guys. And when I was working there, my boss would always say, hey, don't be stingy with the fries. Always make sure the bag is full and greasy. And I was like, why are we putting so many fries just in the bag and not just giving them a bigger container, right? Because we give them such small containers. My boss says, we want to give them the illusion that they're getting more than what they're paying for. And I'm like, what do you mean the illusion? Then more fries, more than what you're paying for? Come here, he said, Jordan, a burger, fries, and drink here at Five Guys is about $26. He said, do you know how much more food you can get anywhere else with $26? He said, we can give them two full bags of fries. They're still paying way too much for food. And I was like, yeah, I guess that's true. So I, ever since I left Five Guys, I don't eat there because we got to eat for free while we were working there, but I'm not going back. Just standard practice in your life. So you're telling me my whole entire life, my biggest struggle was in fact separating the egg yolk from the egg white. Every time I try, I would just give up and eat the entire egg and accept my failure. So, so you're telling me that all I had to do was rub my fingers on garlic clove and I could pick up the egg yolk with my bare fingers. So I had to put it to the test. I went to the store and I got one egg. It's right here. And I got a garlic clove. The garlic clove is right here. I'm going to try this in front of you guys to see if it works or doesn't. I'm now rubbing my fingers on the garlic clove. Nice and garlicky. All right, let's try this out. I have full faith that this is not going to work. And I, oh. Well, it works. It, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand the science behind this. So, so I, I don't even know if I'm happy or if I'm disappointed that it took me this long to figure this out. I'm 25, by the way. And I, how is this even possible? I, it's still in my hand. I, Yo, this new generation of workers are built differently. This new generation of workers quite literally are built differently from every other generation you want to know why come here and i truly mean this get closer this new generation of workers are hanging on by a thread they do not care anymore they don't care about the customer's feelings they don't care if the boss is unhappy with performances they are very much self-aware that they are not getting paid enough to care as much as you want them to and you're lucky they're still working at your establishment and it's quite, it's the best thing ever, right? We had one of our employees at, at my job, right? It was a gift exchange. They got our boss a gift. It was two envelopes. And my boss is like, oh my gosh, you gave me two envelopes? He thought there was money in it. He opens the first envelope, right? Mind you, this was like gift wrapped. He opened it. It was a two week notice. And the other envelope was a note that said, just kidding, I quit today. It was hilarious. Yeah, no, not only Walmart's done with the stealing thing. They had, they've had enough. I don't know how your guys' Walmart does it. Mine, I'm, I'm terrified to even go anymore. You want to know why? Because the thing is, not only do they have a scale, right? They now have an aerial camera that if you don't, if you miss one thing in the scanning area, it will show you footage of you with a thing in your hand, and the thing says. 
please put this in the bagging area. You can't leave without scanning everything in the bagging area, verbatim. Not only that, Walmart employees swarmed around me. I'm just trying to get a Lunchable. One of the employees right next to me goes, what you trying to do? I'm sorry. They're they're li they're lined up, right? Security is like it's like a national bank. They're, now they'll do all of that, but they still won't have Apple Pay. That they still don't want to do that though. Well, Avatar: The Way of Water earned over 430 million at the world. Avatar needed to make two billion dollars. They were they were so confident that they were going to make. Two billion dollars this opening weekend because James Cameron said that the movie was so good, right? That you can go ahead and use the bathroom because you'll definitely come back to watch the movie anyway. He was that confident the movie was going to make two billion dollars opening weekend. They needed to make that to break even. So to see that the numbers are that low makes me so happy because I'm not going to lie. You made people wait 13 years for a sequel. I promise you nobody even remembers what the first Avatar was about. And want to know what the response was for the low numbers? They're going to release an Avatar 2 director's cut. And guess how long that movie is going to be? Come here. Nine hours long. That is an actual fact. I'm finally glad that we get to talk about this. Come here. Back when I was in college, it was my first year of college, my roommate would make rice every day. But here's the thing, he would never eat the rice. I was so confused. I said, why are you making so much rice and not eating it? He'd make the rice and then I'd see the rice in the refrigerator in this big old Ziploc bag. And I'm like, what are you doing with this rice, right? Until one day I saw him make the rice and he poured the rice water into a container. Then he took a shower with the rice water. He put the rice water in his hair. He used it for his skin. Apparently, it's supposed to make your hair stronger and have more volume. And I guess it's supposed to help the skin complexion. And I'm like, that's great. Come here. The amount of rice I've been eating, just trying to, 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 to lessen the amount of rice in the refrigerator. I, I'm so, I was so confused. It's a mistake you learned the hard way that you can now help people to avoid. Your best friend and significant other should never be friends. Come here. And normally, nine times out of ten, best friends and significant others normally don't like each other much anyway, due to the best friend being overprotective and the significant other being jealous. So it's it's normally that's the case. But the off chance they do end up wanting to be friends with each other, come here. That should not happen. You get what I'm saying? There is no worse feeling of betrayal than when you are in an argument between the three of you and your best friend sides with your significant other. At that point, you're like, what what is going on here? Yeah, so fun fact, right? If you work at Chipotle, come here. Don't don't do this because Chipotle always finds out. They always find out, right? Because I used to work at Chipotle. Right? I was a grill, so I made the food. And I thought to myself, how are they going to find out if I eat food? I'll just make more of it. So I would eat cupfuls of just chicken and I would eat it all the time. And until one day I found out Chipotle weighs their meat. They weigh their meat, and what they do is they compare the weight of the meat to how much that has been sold, and they, those two need to coincide with each other, because if they don't, then they'll know that there's been meat that's been wasted. Well, there was so much waste that they called me in the office, and they said, Jordan, have you been eating the chicken? And I was like, no. Then they pulled up the cameras and saw me eating the chicken, and I was like, it only happened one time. They pulled up five other times it happened. He's like, and they're like, are you, are you proud of yourself? Come here. I I was speechless. I Money. I sold my left kidney. Wait, seriously? It's worth like 70000 <laughs> I, um, I should have paid attention in school. I got, a, I got a hold of a healthcare professional after I saw this video. And I was like, hi, I'm... I'm looking into maybe selling a kidney, right? I'm like, is, is that possible if I, you know, was able to, you know, sell a kidney? And she was like, I mean, if you wanted to, we could look in, you know, at your kidneys and maybe sell one. Yeah, wh why not? And then the next question I had, you know, I was like, what if I wanted to do a little two for? What if I wanted to, what if I wanted to sell both kidneys? How would that would that be a thing? And she's like, I mean, you wouldn't really be able to enjoy the money if you sold both of your kidneys. And I was like, well, well, why? And she's like, do you know what happens if you had no kidneys? And I was like, oh, it's, they just grow back, right? I didn't realize a kidney and the liver were different. And she's like, sweetheart, maybe go back to school before you sell both of your kidneys. I'm, she was so sweet. She was Tell me about a 
amount of times that you got fired from your job for an actual good reason. A customer got me fired from a subway that I used to work at and it was over one interaction. Come here. It was my first couple months working at Subway and we had one customer that walked in and said, your guys' sandwiches aren't good. Now, normally I wouldn't care, but I said, sir, this is a build your own sandwich restaurant. He said, yeah, I know. What I'm saying is you guys' sandwiches aren't good. Come here. I said, I don't think you understand what I'm saying here, sir. This restaurant you have to make your own sandwich. So theoretically, wouldn't the sandwich be bad because you made it? And he said, no, what I'm saying is you guys' sandwiches don't taste good. I said, sir, your sandwiches that you make here have roast beef, tuna, and olives on it at the same time voluntarily. I don't think it's bad food. I think you might need good therapy. I got fired pretty fast from that job. Having Monday off is infinitely times better than having Friday off. I don't think people understand, come here, when you work a full-time job long enough, your mentality when it comes to off days will change immediately. For example, when you have Mondays off, it feels way better than having Fridays off because when you have a Friday off, yeah, that weekend feels a bit longer. However, when you start the next work week, that work week feels like an eternity to get to the next weekend. However, when you have Mondays off, now your technical work week changes because now your Tuesday turns into your Monday, then your Wednesday turns into your Tuesday, then your Thursday turns into your Wednesday, and now your Friday is technically your Thursday, meaning that when you get to your technical Friday, it's Saturday. So it feels like you have Monday off and Friday off. So really, having Mondays off, and I, I, we should just do that permanently. I, it just feels better. I'm not going to lie to you. You got to prepare them. You use your fork to hold your taco shell. When I tell you the internet has taught me more valuable information than college ever did, come here, when I literally have a degree, and I don't remember almost anything of what my college courses taught me, but I do remember this taco trick because I tried it. I was at the house, I set the taco shell up on the fork, and everybody looked at me as if I was a rocket scientist. They were listening to every single word I was saying. One of my family members has a PhD and he was like, how did you figure that out? You get what I'm saying? A true genius can be found anywhere at this point. Oh, that's fun. That's great. Let's do a fun fact. Fun facts with Jordan about Australian mosquitoes, right? Number one, apparently they're called mozzies. That's fun, I love that. Number two, they have heartier appetites than any other mosquito. Australian mosquitoes have bigger appetites. On top of that, Australian mosquitoes prefer biting people more than others, meaning that if they like biting somebody, they'll let their other mosquito friends know and then they will be drawn to specific people. That's fun. And this is the best one. I love this fact. This one's great. Mosquitoes live up to three weeks. So they'll stay in the same place for as long as it takes until they actually can get their target. That's fun. I don't want to go to Australia. Want to know what's funny? They increased the price of those drinks right there. So if right now, if you wanted a drink with that ice cube in it, it's now $30. $30, come here, that is three $10 bills, get closer, okay, that is seven Wendy's four for fours, get closer, that is six Little Caesars pizzas, get a little closer, that is two separate gym memberships at any gym you're choosing, back up a little bit, that is one Five Guys Burger, do you understand what I'm saying right now? And I ask, I'm like, well, why is the drink that much money? I'm like, is the elixir made from the fountain of youth itself, right? Did Zeus come down and decide to be a bartender for a weekend and start shaving ice? And so why, why is it $30? And they told me, oh, it's because the ice makes the drink taste better. Oh, I said, where is the ice made from a special type of water? They're like, no, it's just, it's just a different shape. Do you understand? I'm not, I can't, I don't, I, I don't understand. I can't do it. As a general rule in our house, if a spider is smaller than your hand, he's free to stay. See, and that's just, that's just so much fun. The thing is, right, in Australia, the spiders are a bit bigger, right? Over here, we also have a rule for spiders. Our rule is this. If the spider is bigger than your hand, uh, they can keep the house. Right. Um, if the spider is smaller than your hand, they can just keep the room that they're in, if that makes sense. So when I was younger, right, there was a spider in my room. I texted my mom saying, Mom, there's a spider in my room. And she responded saying, what are you doing in that spider's room? That's basically how we have to handle spiders. Right. I then said, 
I'm trying to get the spider out of my room. And she said, good luck. Let me know how that goes. And, you know, basically, spiders are the ones that are in control over here. Uh, and that's pretty much how it's always been. Y'all remember when Netflix said love is sharing a password back in 2017? I don't think you guys understand how intense it's getting at Netflix right now come here because they updated their password sharing rules to now the rule is if you want to share your account with anybody it's an extra $7.99 a month per person right and then if they find out that you're sharing your password without using those rules they ban your account so a lot of people are trying to cancel their Netflix account I called Netflix customer service because I just wanted to ask them questions that was it right when they answered the phone they said thank you for calling Netflix how would you like to cancel your account I'm like I wasn't I wasn't trying to cancel my account at all. And they were like, oh, oh, that's cool. Then how may I help you? I feel so bad for the customer service people. When the bride wants in and out serves at her wedding. So I got my feelings hurt completely. And I guess it, that was my fault. I, I wanted to see if this was real. I've never seen an in and out food truck before. So I wanted to see if this actually exists. So I call in and out just to, I'm curious to see how much it would be. Like, I'm not going to order one, but I wanted to see. So I was like, hey, how much would it be to get a food truck for this party I'm having, right? And they were like, oh, it's going to be $2,000, like a base rate, plus an extra $500 for a trip charge. And they're going to charge you for the mileage as well. I was like, okay, so it's almost $3,000, entirely too much money. I was like, for sure. Then they said the fries aren't included. They only serve burgers and drinks. They don't do fries with the food truck. And I was like, well, you guys' burgers aren't good without the fries. And right when I said that, they were immediately insulted. And they said, sir, if you're broke, just say that. Come here. What? And I was like, I'm not broke. Your guys' burgers just aren't that good. And then they said, no one wants to come to your party anyway. And then I hung up. I will go to to not have to cook. <laughs> I ordered catering for meal prep. Mashed potatoes. Believe it or not, that is actually genius. Come here, back when I worked at Chipotle, right, we had a catering order for a party of 25 people, right? So it took me all morning to make this food because I'm thinking I'm making food for 25 people. So this is boxes worth of food, right? I'm expecting a few people to come and pick up this food. Only one individual showed up. One individual in a cowboy hat. He walked up, he's picking up the boxes of food. I said, sir, where's the party at? He walks right up to me. He goes, I am the party. I said, what do you mean? He said, all this food is for me. I was like, what are you talking about? He said, I can take this food home, freeze it, and eat it throughout the month. And this is cheaper than going to the grocery store. He said, this food is supposed to be 25 people. This is cheaper than going to Chipotle 25 individual times. I'm like, that's genius. I'm waiting for him to tip me. He didn't, he didn't leave a tip because he said that knowledge right there is worth more than any tip that, that he can give. Disappears after he was accidentally paid 300 times. I don't think you understand how much money that actually is. 300 times somebody's salary, right? You want to know what the best magic trick is? Seeing how fast an employee disappears out of thin air, right? When you accidentally give them millions and millions of dollars, right? By the time you actually realize you made that mistake and call the store to talk to that employee, they're gone already, right? Hey, where's Brad? Brad left the country, right? He just changed numbers. And if you're a good coworker, you didn't see a thing. You know what I'm saying? Read receipts on. They will intentionally not open your message until they feel like responding. So I don't think you guys understand. Some people are professionals at reading unread messages. Does that make sense? Right? You can send them a message and they can say marked unread for five months, but they already know what the message says. They find a way to read it, right? Especially now, because before what people would do is they would open the message, but they would turn off all of their like cellular data so it doesn't register as it's even opened. So they can see what it says and then turn on the registered data and then it marks as unread. But now Apple has that update to where you can just hold down the messages after you read them and just mark them as unread. You know what I mean? And that's the benefit of having, you know, a good phone instead of a, an Android app. My reminder, pink drink is just ocean spray, white crayon strawberry. I do not know what's more impressive. The fact that you can make the Starbucks pink drink with just two ingredients or the fact that I have both ingredients already. So apparently you just do the ocean spray, white crayon strawberry and the silk coconut milk and you put it in a glass of, of ice and um, it'll taste like the pink drink. So I'm going to try it. Here is this. Here is the milk. Okay, we have the mixture. I'm really excited. The pink drink is like my favorite drink ever. So uh, I'm going to give it a try and see if it if is. That, um, 
that was awful. That that tastes absolutely nothing like the. Now that I think about it, the pink drink has neither of these ingredients in the actual drink itself. I Don't worry at all about the things they do or say. I love so my friend has this rule: is that before you go into his house, you must shower and you must change into a different pair of clothes before you go in. And I'll tell you why: because my friend went on one date, right? He went on one date. It was the first date of the year he's ever been on. It was with this girl. He said she seemed really nice. So they went back to her place, right? They went back to her place. He ended up staying the night. And so as he's sleeping, he thought that she was tickling his feet. So it was like three in the morning. He's like, can you please stop tickling my feet? I'm trying to sleep. And then he started feeling a tickling on his back. He's like, can you please stop tickling me? And he looks over and she's not even there. It's just him in the bed. And he's like, what's going on? So he looks under the covers, surrounded by bed bugs he ran out the building he left his wallet and everything except for his keys ever since then he doesn't let anybody in his house unless you shower i have a question when is it not appropriate to break up with someone Ooh, okay number one uh birthdays do not break up with anybody on their birthday that is a terrible birthday gift to give somebody number two holidays especially Christmas and Valentine's Day. Do not break up with somebody on Valentine's Day. You do not want them to link something that's supposed to be joyous with something incredibly traumatic and now have it be a yearly anniversary that they can never forget. Uh, okay, I will see your number three, weddings. Do not break up with somebody during a wedding. Do you know how bad it is to be sitting at a table meant for two? It is just you there eating two fish dinners. All right, uh, number four, do not break up with somebody at the beginning of a long trip. My friend did that. They broke up at the beginning of a five-hour car ride back. Very quiet, very sad. Music did not help. It only made it worse. And lastly, do not break up with somebody while they're using the bathroom.